Helen Leavitt grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Leavitt always knew she wanted to do something in the arts. However, as she put it, she could not draw. In 1931, Leavitt dropped out of high school to work for J. Florin Mitchell. Mitchell was a commercial portrait photographer. Through this job, Leavitt learned how to develop photos in the darkroom. Leavitt began to take inspiration from the work of Henry Cartier Briesen. Because of him, she first saw photography as a form of art. By going to museums, Leavitt was able to learn about composition. In 1987, Leavitt took interest in the chalk drawings that were part of the New York children's street culture of the time. These photos were then published in the Street Chalk Drawings and Messages, New York City. Leavitt continued to take pictures. Her style was street photography, which she took in East Harlem in the Garmin District on the Lower East Side. The work captured the significance and story of daily life. Her work from this was first published in the Fortune Magazine's July 1939 issue. In 1946, Leavitt received her first grant from the Museum of Modern Art. Then, in 1965, she published her first major collection, A Way of Seeing. Life was captured by her lens. Whether it was an adult with responsibilities, or a child whose only responsibility was to have fun. In 1970, much of her work was stolen in a burglary of her apartment. What remained was put into a 2005 book, Slideshow, The Color Photographs of Helen Leavitt. Due to the subject of her photos being street photography, the shift of the New York culture from playing on the streets to staying inside watching television hurt her inspiration. She stated, I go where there's a lot of activity. Children used to be outside, and now the streets are empty. Prior to this, in 2001, Leave It released Crosstown. Helen liked to do things naturally. She said, I never had a project. I would just go out and shoot, follow my eyes. What they noticed? I tried to capture with my camera for others to see. In 2004, Helen released yet another publication called Here and There. Helen would have stacks of photographs lined up in her apartment. When one reporter came, he asked to take a peek, and she replied, Nope, because I'm unsure about it. If I was sure, that they were worth sharing, I'd show it, but I can't. However, a few years later, she must have decided that they were worth sharing because that book was here and there. Helen's theory when shooting photography was to not have a theory. She based her photos off of her experiences rather than what art was telling her to do. She said, it would be mistaken to suppose that any of the best photography is to come at by intellection. It is like all art, essentially the result of an intuitive process, drawing on all that the artist is rather than on anything he thinks far less theorizes about. Helen's final publication was simply titled Helen Leave It, and was released in 2008. There is more than the eye sees to Helen's photography. She would find meaning in her photos to add to the social movements of the time, such as socialism and communism. Today, Helen is remembered as one of history's best street photographers. However, she did not have the same recognition when she was alive. Because of the fact that Helen lived a very private life, I do not believe her lack of recognition in any way took away from the pleasure she gained from taking beautiful, life-filled photographs.